Hello and welcome to hobby vlog number 128. It's been a bit of an odd week for me this week. Uh, Angela and Rosie are away uh, on holiday and I always hate it when they go away and miss them. So that's been a bit tough and there's been other things going on with friends um, having a personal tragedy which has been really tough. So I've done less this week. I've just decided that as I quite often say in these intros, this is a hobby not a job. So if you're not feeling it, don't do it. Uh, that having said that, this morning I've cracked on a bit, I've given myself a bit of a shake uh, and I'm feeling a lot more positive than I have all week which is, which is quite a relief because it's been a bit of a black one for me at times. Uh, so I really hope you enjoyed the video, it's a bit of an odd one like I say, uh, a little bit of a mix and match, a couple of new projects uh, that I've been cracking on with when I've been getting time um, and uh, yeah, the seafoam as well, a couple of updates on that so hopefully you'll enjoy it. Let me know in the comments below what you think, I appreciate every single one of you that watch these videos, uh, it means a lot to me and I do reply to every single comment I receive, so don't be shy, do please say hello. Um, I hope you enjoy the video as I've said a couple of times, and I'll see you again at the end. I realise I forgot to have a look in these at the end of last week, so we're going to start at the beginning of this week, and unfortunately the news is not all that great. This first one has pretty much nothing in it. This one had some growing, but they've all fallen over, though some are picking up a little bit now, which is a bit disappointing. This one was the same, you can see there were some in there, but uh, yeah, they've uh, largely fallen over. As we move along, same story here, they started sprouting, but yeah, not looking great. Might need to add a little bit more water, I think, to those. However, these first two are looking the best, so I think what I need to do is put some more water in. You can see there's quite a few in this one, it's looking a bit better but not as good as I hoped. So I think what I'm gonna do now is add some water and uh, yeah, we'll check again at the end of the week and see how they're doing. Hopefully the, they pick up and they get a few more. But yeah, I'm a bit disappointed that at least two out of those, I have nothing left, which is sad. So some additional prettiness and decoration for the workshop area in this. So I've, I've put together the car lift jack thing, which I'm gonna stick down in this area here. So. Uh, I had to trim a little bit of it off because um, it's designed to slot into a hole in the other base and obviously I'm not using the full base so that will just get glued down using PVA there. Uh, the other things that I've got which I'll just glue in place or maybe even just scatter and not glue down. I've got some of these just little pumps and what have you which um, I'm putting in there just as a scatter terrain. Um, and finally, same sort of idea. I've got some little tins and what have you that I'm going to stack up and uh, put around as well. And the last thing is this little stand. Now this little stand in the kit is supposed to have those cans on it, but it was very fiddly and I just didn't want to do it particularly. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to just have it as a stand with a map on it. So there's a map showing the location of the petrol station in the surrounding area. So that's just a transfer. So I'm going to stick that on the transfer on here and have that just stood on the sidewalk loose and then I think probably apart from some oil stains which I'm going to put in here uh, when that's all dried I'll just use some black wash I think that's done so I'll bring you back when I come to do the the oil stains um, but yeah just going to do this transfer now maybe use a spot of super glue to stick these other extraneous items down um, but uh, yeah pretty much pretty much done very very pleased with this so I'll get that uh, finished and bring you back on the next step which will be the stains finishing touches on this awesome build I'm enjoying so much is to put a little bit of uh, like oil and what have you drop some oil on it so I've got a brush which I'm going to water down some black paint a lot just using the lid of the paint here and then just gonna splash it on there really water it down if I go too over the top I can always come along with some grey and um, like feather that in and make that a little bit less aggressive but that's the idea basically it's going to put some oil splotches and what have you just to make it a little bit less stark there's often spilled fuel or what have you in places often a, a, a car will be leaking when it's parked up and fueling so uh, yeah i think that's actually enough i'm going to wait for that to dry and i might actually uh, as i say i might might dull that down a bit blend it in a bit more but, uh, but yeah, pretty happy with that. Just as a very, very light, um, kind of like final touch. And 
yeah, let's, uh, let's wrap that project up. Fantastic, I've really enjoyed this and it looks great. Yes, I'm finally using the Proxon table saw, but you're gonna have to watch the Battle Games Middle Earth video on the first uh, Tuesday in May to see it working because I'm about to use it. I've, I've tested it, I'm about to use it on camera now. Um, and you'll have to watch that to see it, so tough. <laughs> but yeah, I'll uh, do a proper rundown video of this at some point as well, because I just changed the blade a bit fiddly, um, but when I've used it a little bit more, I'll do a proper video. But yeah, just thought I'd say, I'm, I'm using it. See, see, I bought it and I am using it. <laughs> well, here we have a lovely scatter of Sarissa scatter terrain. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build my way through it. And I'm probably gonna go from the top, which means the Old West Wind Water Pump. So I'll get this made up and then base it. I'll do this as I have been doing my recent MDF kits. If there's anything particularly horrendous or difficult in the construction of it, then I'll highlight it. But otherwise, get it assembled off camera. Once it's built, then I'll have a look at how I'm gonna finish it, paint it and base it. I'm quite excited about this. Just to quickly show you what else I've got in the stack. I've got a water tower. And I've got a whole bunch of carriages and coaches. So a stagecoach, a Surrey carriage, trail wagon, two chuck wagons, and just a standard wagon. So these are gonna be really good scatter terrain or backdrops for photographs or what have you. First of all though, I will get the wind water pump um, and get that assembled, and then I'll build my way down through the stack. Well, that was ridiculously easy. Did that in about 10 minutes or so, total elapsed time. Really, really simple instructions, and uh, yeah, as you can see, the uh, it even turns, which is cool. So, what I'm going to do now is paint that up and base it, which I'll bring you along for. Uh, but I'm also going to make start on the next one, which is going to be the water tower. So, I will put that together. It looks very similar. I'm expecting it to be just as quick. It basically looks like the same structure, just not tapering, and then with like a barrel on top. So, yeah, we'll, we'll find out. I'll let you know how easy it is, but this one. Yeah, you're not going to have any trouble putting that together. Very, very simple. Well, that was also really easy. And even the water uh, butt at the top was easy. It's well designed. Uh, just to say, if you are doing this, do score down the lines very gently with the knife on the outside. Otherwise, the bend will be a bit difficult. But um, other than that, that went together very, very quickly. So the next thing that I have, just doing an order of what's in the pile, is going to be the stagecoach. So uh, yeah, let's give that one a go. Well, the uh, stagecoach is done. Uh, probably the only thing I would say is it gets a little bit fiddly when you start to put it together. Some of these suspension is quite delicate uh, and I would probably put it together in a different order. I'd probably put the wheels on last <laughs> because, well, they're really easy to put on and they get in the way a lot when you're trying to fit the body of the, uh, or the, the, the the actual coach part to the chassis. Uh, they get quite a lot in the way. So that's the only thing I'd say, but apart from that, another easy thing to put together. Next one I'm gonna do is the Surrey carriage. These are going together really nicely and uh, gonna be really nice on the tabletop. I'm quite pleased I've decided to do this and get these cracked out. Um, what I might also do, just grab this in from behind, is make my foreground one as well. Just as a little bit of a, uh, of a comparison, but I'm not going to do that yet. I'll get through the through all of the Sarissa ones and I might do that one last. Um, so yeah, so Surrey Carriage coming up next. I am flying through these. It has literally been 10 minutes since I filmed and I finished it already, well, assemble it. Uh, I am aware that some people are going to be saying, why aren't I painting on the sprue? It's just not something I do. Um, I'm sure that I'll be frustrated at myself for not doing it when I try to come to paint it, um, particularly um, with this one where potentially I might want to have the I have some like leather on the um, on the seats. I'm not sure whether um, I might do a little different colour on those, but I just I just not a big fan of painting on the sprue, um, and I always don't think about it. Uh, the other thing to say is the only order of difference I did on this is I put the traces on last. Um, having said about putting the wheels on last and changing the order, uh, funnily enough, the instruction for this one did have you put the wheels on next to last, um, uh, put the wheels on last. But actually, I don't think that's right for this one. Um, the traces I've put on after putting the wheels on because it's actually got a round 
connection um, and so uh, if you want to get it so the traces are sitting on the ground you need to have the wheels and so you can get the drop right so that's what I've done there anyway bit of a nutter there the next one I'm going to do is these three so this is two truck wagons um, and a trail wagon and that's um, actually near enough the last one so I might actually just do these four next and then I, I won't do another kind of uh, section like this because it's just the same uh, so I'll put these together anything of interest um, I'll highlight like I say uh, otherwise I'll just glue them together I'm really enjoying this early, uh, early bank holiday Friday morning get a little bit of time done before my day has to start um, so yeah hopefully I'll, hopefully I'll get all these done um, and then I can have a look at that foreground model um, so yeah let's get these built and I'll bring them back and show what they look like when they are done. So I've had a couple of deliveries yesterday and I uh, thought I'd show them because most of them are about the hobby. So this here is a page of uh, labels, stickers, circular stickers uh, which I've bought to go uh, underneath my miniatures. Now if you're anything like me then one of the biggest issues I've got with miniature games and having so many miniature games is knowing which is which, knowing what the names of the characters are, or what, they're, what they are actually. Because, I mean, with Middle Earth now, when I first started, I didn't know anything. Now, with years under my belt, I kind of know what I'm looking at. But it is a big challenge, and even now with Middle Earth, sometimes you're like, is that Merry or is that Pippin? Which one is it? Which is just how it is. So what I've done is I've ordered these. They are LaserJet inkjet printers, uh, printable, uh, and there is an online editor <coughs> on their website. There is also one where you can download a template, but they don't have one for this size, unfortunately. There's an online editor which you can go in, you can fill in. It allows you to um, do like curved writing and what have you. And the idea is, is I'm going to. I've bought these specifically and first to go onto my uh, my Western miniatures here as you can see there's one that I've painted so I will report back how good that is uh, I've start I've edited I've worked on the editor a bit I'm and I've not filled up very many so I'm trying to work out I don't want to waste the sheet because once you've printed a sheet and peeled some of them off you can't put that sheet through again and there's 70 I think per sheet so to print out I mean 12 which is what I've written on so far because that's all I've got for these miniatures is a humongous waste so I might try to uh, find some other ones that I can label up just to help me in the future so like I say Mary and Pippin and all those sorts of things uh, but yeah really cool got this without Amazon unfortunately but I'm sure you can source it direct from the company as well um, uh, which I probably should have done I, I feel uh, unhappy at myself um, the company is Avery Zweckform which is clearly German, as you can see. But yeah, the website's easy enough to use, um, and uh, hopefully this is going to help me, and I'll report back, like I say. So that's one thing that's arrived this week. The second thing is a gift that I've received. Now, if you don't follow the great Mim yet, Chris, go and check him out. Uh, he was one of my uh, recommendation Mondays, and his videos are doing really well. Very, very pleased for him. He's a really nice guy. Been watching my videos for a long time, so uh, uh, probably watching this. So thank you very much for this, Chris. This is just wonderful. Uh, he contacted me to say, I've been cleaning out some stuff. I've got some things I'm not going to make use of. Would you make use of them? And I said, if you're sure, uh, um, offer to pay. Uh, wouldn't take it. Offer to pay postage. Wouldn't take it. Nice guy. And uh, yeah, so as of yesterday, this arrived. So what we've got is we've got some barrels. You can never have too many barrels. So they will probably be being painted up and used in my Wild West terrain, which I'm working on at the moment. I've got some oil barrels. Now, these oil barrels and these petrol uh, cans, I'm going to paint up and put onto my TCU diorama. So that means that my TCU diorama is not finished. I thought it was. But now that I've received these, I can add a little bit more scatter, make it a little bit more lively. Um, so that's going to be done as well. And the uh, final two things are some Warlord uh, Games miniatures. So the uh, some promotional models and open day models. We've got Lucky Jack and we've got an Aztec model as well. So that's really cool. And it just goes to show what an awesome... Uh, community this really is. Uh, Chris is just someone who watches my videos. We've talked a bit. He's a really nice guy. He makes some great videos that he's just started. So go and check out his channel if you don't yet. Uh, but yeah, he just thought out the goodness of his heart, saw these and thought, well, this could be used on TCU and this is going to be good for general and, you know, share and share alike. So again, once again, thanks Chris for that. Really cool. And definitely go and check out his videos. They are wonderful. And uh, yeah, really, really cool. So this is my other delivery that uh, I paid for. <laughs> uh, so we'll just get this opened, as you can see. I have not opened it yet. 
And this is another Mindwork Games model, a limited edition, Palace of Medusa. So this will be going on to the uh, Mountain of Opportunity. If I can, oh, actually, is it a slide or is it a fold? I see magnets. Yeah, I thought it was an open. So I'll have a quick look at this in uh, very brief detail. I'm not going to go into too much detail. This was a limited edition they released recently, which I like the look of, and I seem to be getting quite a lot of their models. So I've just kept it up. It's got a really nice decorative base, as you can see. So yeah, that will come to the channel at some point. I'm not going to get everything out because I really want it to keep keep nicely. So that will go on the Mountain of Opportunity. I've actually got one more from them on the way, which is a Middle Earth related one, which they released very recently as well. Sorry for the noise. There we are. So this is uh, Palace of Medusa. I don't know whether it's still for sale or not. Uh, it's a limited edition. Patrick Jones, he's a great, great sculptor. Uh, but yeah, that's going to go on the mountain. Literally mountain now of my work stuff that I've got. I, I own loads of their stuff. I'm going to have to actually start painting it at some point. Just need to get the guts up, really. So that's nearly done. This is quite a long segment, I know. Uh, but the next one, I think, is quite cool. A little bit off the wall. So I hope that you find the next one really interesting. Yes, it's a Kaufland bag. And that's because yesterday I was in Kaufland. We have Kaufland here in Bulgaria. And I saw these for about six euros a pop. You get like a kind of funky stand, which I might be able to find a use for. But mainly you get six wooden bases. So me being me, bought one, two, three, four of these and they're going to go into my pile of basic materials. One of the things I always struggle with and I'm doing more dioramas uh, is finding good sized bases. These seem to be a really nice size, they're not too big, they're not too small. You can put a really good uh, di uh, diorama on them um, and uh, as they're all the standard size they'll look really nice on the uh, on display. So yeah, I, I like this. I like finding things that aren't necessarily for the purpose and they're making use of them and that's just really cool so hopefully that's a uh, keep your eye open a bit of inspiration if you're ever in the shops so you see something if you see something you think it might work grab it because it probably will so you'll probably see these on the channel as well at some point soon is not soon enough um they just look really good bases they can be sanded down they're quite thick they're probably too thick to actually use for scenery but maybe they're not um, i'll have a look um and work, work and when i'm working on them i might use them for scenery but most i bought them as a display base so there we are um they are breakfast board sets with high cut resistance apparently <laughs> yeah all right so it's the end of the week or the beginning of the next week so let's have a quick look and see how it is you can see that this one has quite a good scattering now i need to put a bit more water on i've not looked at these yet today and that one's not looking too bad. Got a few fallen over, but quite a few have stood up. This one has come back nicely. Um, you can see that I actually had the lid on right on that one. They were a little bit off. You can see these ones have the condensation on. And these ones don't. That's because these ones weren't seated right, so we need to pay a little bit more attention there. Um, this one has two, but I think that last time I looked at it, it had none. So that's, or maybe three. There might be another one there. Yes, there is. Look. Very bad, I can't really focus. It's not with the greatest footage, apologies. Um, this one, a couple have stood up, which is really good because that was completely and utterly devoid of any life last time I looked. But if this is the set, yeah, this one is totally gone. There's nothing in that one. But I also think that was the one that I put the fewest seeds in. So yeah, there's been some progress, pretty pleased. So what I'm gonna do is add a little bit more water to those and just keep watching. Uh, and uh, it might be the end of this coming week that I look to plant them up. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm giving it a go. And I'm really pleased actually to be recording the progress because my memory is so bad that yeah, I would clearly forget if I wasn't doing this. So uh, yeah. Good going. All right, so the Candish King progress being made. I think I'm pretty much happy with the colors I've got. 
um, I need to basically start basing, basically start basing. <laughs> so yeah, really, really happy. I've gone for a very shiny armor, which is not normally my style. Um, my mate Tim pointed this out and questioned uh, why. I just wanted him to stand out on the battlefield, and that's cool. Pretty pleased with like the black lacquer look I've gone for, really like that. Um, and yeah, just generally happy with how it's looking. So next up, we'll be getting these onto bases. My next 12 Warbats here, these are the final 12, I'm not going to buy any more. These are coming on nicely. Uh, I've mainly used the um, uh, contrast paints uh, and I've tried to do some fun stuff with some underpainting which has worked really well on this one here you can see. Uh, I'm, I'm not actually very motivated at the moment for painting so I'm doing a little less than I normally do. Um, but I'm getting there with these. Uh, the fun part for me is going to be doing the detailing on the bases. Uh, I'm pretty much nearly done on the actual bodies of the um, of the bats. I just need to do a little bit of red on the on the tongue and maybe a little bit of highlighting or what have you on uh, and some shading on some of the uh, of the wings. Uh, but yeah, it's largely they've, they've come along really nicely. They're, this is what uh, contrast paints are made for. They've been, it's been very quick and easy to do. Um, so yeah, pretty pleased with these and uh, I'll, I'll probably uh, get these to a base stage and then film again. Uh, they're just, it's just contrast paints pretty much um, with a little bit of ivory from Vallejo picking out the um, claws, if that will focus, the claws and the teeth and what have you. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Well, there we are. It's, as I say, been a bit of an odd week. On top of the stuff that I've filmed, I've spent quite a lot of time in the workshop trying to get that tidied and cleaned because the next thing I need to do is start putting together my Prusa uh, so that I can have a go at some FDM printing. I've got a load of really cool things I want to print, so I'm quite impatient to get that done. But before I do that, I need to have the whole thing tidy and clear and squared away. So I have spent a little bit of time this week doing that, which has taken away some of my hobby time. Um, it's also been quite nice to do that because it's mind numbing, basically sorting out random boxes of broken screws that the builders have saved and binning them um, and then sorting out all the other bits and pieces into different box boxes so that I can find them again in the future. So it's a simple sorting exercise. Mind numbing, mind numbing is good when you're not feeling very motivated because well, you just kind of do it, you have to think. Uh, so yeah, that's been something I've done uh, and uh, obviously you've seen everything else. So thank you so much for watching. If you've got this far, I really appreciate it. Uh, it does mean a lot to me. Uh, the people watch my videos uh, and uh, yeah puts a smile on my face as you can see even when I'm not really feeling like it it puts a smile on my face and that's really really valuable to me so thank you and uh, yeah thinking about Ukraine obviously as I always end these videos at the moment um, yeah horrendous so many people leaving and so much destruction anyway <laughs> that is what it is and uh, I'll wrap this up but please everyone out there stay healthy Stay safe and stay well.